So, are you curious about what happens to the things you recycle? Have you ever wondered what a day in the life of your recyclables might look like? If so, we've got you covered. Here's a look at the journey that plastic bottles, paper, aluminum and steel cans take every day. A recycling facility is a place where all your blue box materials go, are then separated into various grades of products, which the City of Toronto then turns around and sells to the marketplace. This is not just trash talk. The facility is crucial to helping the city achieve a goal of zero waste. The recycling facilities um, process annually about 210,000 tons of material. When you couple that with 100,000 tons of or green organic material and another 100,000 tons of leaf and yard waste, that's helped us achieve a diversion rate of approximately 45%. And facilities like this will allow us to add more and more products and, and, and increase our diversion rates. This particular facility, known as the Dufferin Transfer Station, handles about 350 tons of material a day and about 85 to 100,000 tons of waste material per year. The process is relatively simple. You put your waste in a blue box. It's picked up and then trucked here. It's then placed on a conveyor belt. From there, the material heads into the plant and goes through various stages, where individual products are culled out. It's a tough job. And the result is a number of different products for us to sell. The products in recycling have come a long way. There's quite the demand for them. And the, the revenues that we get from these products exceed the costs of, of, of processing them. In a sense, this is a money maker for the City of Toronto. But there is more to the recycling story. It's important to keep in mind that... Recycling is not just a homogenous thing. There's lots of different kinds of recycling and lots of different contexts for recycling. So done well, recycling is an absolutely essential part of the solution. Done poorly, recycling is a humongous obstacle and part of the problem. One is that recycling, there's, there's a reason recycling is the third in the mantra of reduce, reuse, recycle. Recycling is the last thing we should do with an object. It's what we should do when our backs are against the wall. We have tried everything we can to reduce the use of this product, to borrow it and share it with friends instead of go buy another one, to design it out of use, to design it better so it's repairable and upgradable and reusable. If you just cannot do anything except use this product, Recycling is sort of an admission of defeat. It's the last thing that we should do with it. The problem is that too often people substitute recycling for making real change. So it's true, there are two sides to every recycling story. But did you know that a littered aluminum can takes 300 years to break down on its own? By recycling aluminum cans, we save landfill space as well as energy. It takes 95% less energy to produce new aluminum from discarded aluminum cans than from raw materials. When it comes to plastic, they account for 7% of the total weight of a typical landfill. In fact, Canadians take home more than 5 million plastic bags a week. Thanks to recycling, innovative products are being made from empty detergent bottles, milk jugs, and other plastic refuse. And recycling steel from construction sites, vehicles and mechanical equipment can save a lot of energy and pollution. One ton of recycled steel saves 1.4 tons of iron ore and 3.6 barrels of oil. Glass containers can be recycled again and again, but each year in Canada, 6 million tons of glass are thrown away. A littered glass bottle will take a whopping 1 million years to break down. And for every ton of new glass that needs to be produced, 12.6 kilograms of air pollution are created. Recycling glass reduces that pollution by about 14 to 20 percent. To put it in perspective, one recycled glass bottle saves enough energy to power a 100-watt light bulb for four hours. Recycling one ton of newspaper saves 19 trees, 3 cubic meters of landfill, 4,000 kilowatt hours of energy, 29,000 liters of water and 30 kilograms of pollution. Recycled newsprint can be made into new newspaper, 
kitty litter, shingles for houses, absorbents for oil spills and insulation. Products made from recycled cardboard use 25% of the energy and create half as much pollution as making them from new materials. And in the City of Toronto, the Green Bin program is an opportunity for residents to... Well, the Green Bin program is, a, is an opportunity for, for residents uh, to for lack of a better word, recycle their food waste. We collect it and put it through our processes. Uh, it will end up as a soil amendment like compost. Right now we're processing uh, approximately 100,000 tons of, of a green bin organics program. Um, we are in the process of building a new uh, facility uh, at another transfer station and uh, we forecast that the 100,000 tons will get up to about 150,000 tons over the next four or five years. So these are steps in the right direction, but is there a bigger solution? The solution is not to, to look at this and say, what should we do with all this waste? The solution is to look way back upstream at the extraction and the production, the, the design of the product, and say how can we reduce the total amount and toxicity of stuff moving through the system, not just let all that continue unabated and say, oh, what are we going to do with this pile of junk? Oh, let's recycle it. That, that's when recycling becomes a problem. In 2007, Toronto City Council approved the Getting to 70% Waste Diversion from Landfill Plan. If the city achieves this goal, they will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by about 25%. That's equivalent to taking 100,000 cars off the road. They'll recycle 240,000 tons of paper annually to save about 4.5 million trees a year and save 900 kilowatt hours of electricity, enough to power 170,000 homes.